9 Self-Made Billionaires How They Started and How They Made Their Money Here are some of the top self-made billionaires in the world, their backgrounds, and their journeys to making billions. Elon Musk Elon Musk is a South African-born Canadian-American billionaire tech mogul who began to hustle at the age of 12. He started his entrepreneurial journey teaching himself how to code and sold his first video game for $500. The first time he arrived in Canada, he held a continuous stream of odd jobs. While at the university, Elon sold computers as well as computer parts to make extra cash. And to help pay for rent, he and his friend turned their 10-bedroom fraternity home into a nightclub on the weekends and charged cover. Musk partnered up with his brother Kimball in 1995 to create Zip2. Although the company struggled in the beginning, local and national newspapers eventually began using Zip2 to offer additional services to their respective customers. Musk then launched X.com with business partners Peter Thiel and Max Levchin. In 2000, X.com merged with American software company Confinity, best known for creating PayPal, and in 2001, Musk was named PayPal's chairman and CEO, shortly before the company was acquired by eBay for $1.5 billion. In 2004, Musk joined engineers Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenning to help run Tesla Motors, where Musk had an integral part in designing the first electric car, the Tesla Roadster. Under his watch, Tesla has become one of the world's most popular and coveted car brands. With his space travel company SpaceX, Musk landed several high-profile contracts with NASA and the United States Air Force to design rockets and conduct military missions. He's been very open about his desire to have the first man on Mars by 2025, with assistance from NASA. Warren Buffett Warren Buffett is an American businessman and investment expert. He was interested in savings, business, and investment from his childhood. He started investing at a young age and purchased his first stock when he was only 11 years old. He sold chewing gum, Coca-Cola, newspapers, and magazines from door to door and also worked in his grandfather's grocery store. He saved up and bought a pinball machine aged 15 and placed it in a barber shop. A few years later, he owned several machines across many shops. After completing his studies, Buffett asked for a job from Graham, his university professor, but he refused to hire him at that time, but later reconsidered and gave him a shot. Buffett returned to Omaha in 1956 from New York and he launched Buffett Associates Limited. In 1962, he collaborated with Charlie Munger and together they purchased Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett's investments haven't always been successful, but he made all the investments after careful study, and all the investments are followed by value principles. He never brings his emotions in the trade. He always keeps his eye on new opportunities and always sticks to consistent strategy. This strategy made him different from others and helped him in achieving success in life. Oprah Winfrey Oprah's ascent from a life in poverty and hardship into one of the most influential women in the world is an inspiration to many. She is a media mogul, producer, talk show host, author, and philanthropist. Believe it or not, she grew up wearing dresses made from potato sacks while living with her grandmother as her teenage mom looked for work. At age 14, Winfrey broke free and went to live with her dad in Nashville, Tennessee after being physically assaulted. The stable and education-centered environment her dad created gave her the chance to excel academically and socially at East Nashville High School where she became an honor roll student and was voted the most popular girl in her class. It was here where she discovered her passion for media. She joined the speech team and worked for a local black radio station after school. By her senior year, she received a full scholarship to Tennessee State University. However, at age 19, she left college to pursue a career in media. She became the first black female news anchor below the age of 20 in Nashville, starting with a few gigs as a local anchor before landing a co-anchor position in Baltimore. She was sexually harassed and humiliated there, but didn't need to quit as she was fired a few months after joining. Not long after this did she land another job at AM Chicago. Within a few months, Winfrey transformed AM Chicago from the lowest rated talk show in Chicago to the highest rated one. Three years later, the show was renamed The Oprah Winfrey Show. In 1986, she made a bold career transforming move when she founded Harpo Productions and negotiated ownership of The Oprah Winfrey Show. While being known for her award-winning talk show, Winfrey has also been involved in films, television series, and plays. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in the 1985 drama The Color Purple. She also published her own magazine, The Oprah Magazine, started a radio channel, Oprah Radio, and most recently partnered with Discovery Communications to launch a cable channel, The Oprah Winfrey Network. Jack Ma 
Jack Ma is a Chinese internet entrepreneur whose amazing mental toughness and resilience got him through many failures. In his early childhood, Jack Ma failed in his primary school and his middle school examinations. When applying to universities, Jack failed the entrance exams a number of times before finally joining Hangzhou National University. During and after his bachelor's degree, Jack tried and failed to get a job at several places. After spending three years trying to get into a university, Jack failed to land a job after applying to them numerous times. He even failed in his first two entrepreneurial ventures, but this didn't hold him back. After finally accepting all of his rejections and failures, Jack Ma visited the US in 1995. It was then that he found out about the internet and computers. Computers were pretty rare in China at the time, and he decided it was time for China and its people to get on the internet. Finally, after convincing 17 of his friends to invest and join him, he created his new startup, Alibaba, which they started from his apartment. Building trust among the people of China that an online system of payment and package transfers is safe was the biggest challenge Jack Ma and Alibaba faced. Having started his first successful company at the age of 31, Jack Ma runs one of the biggest e-commerce networks in the world. The company grew to fast rate, expanding all across the world, quickly growing out of its China shell. Coming only second in terms of sales per year, Alibaba has become the e-commerce giant that Jack Ma had envisioned for it. Zhu Kunfei Due to financial constraints and a need to assist her blind father, she dropped out of school at the age of 16 to work as an operator in a watch glass company. She would teach herself at night, relying on books to design a variety of technologies. After years of hard work and saving every hard-earned penny, she set up a silkscreen printing unit in 1993 with the help of some relatives. She encountered a number of challenges which she fought through. The turning point for the company was in 2003, when Motorola called her and asked the company to design a scratch-proof glass for their Razer V3 phone. After this, other mobile companies, the likes of HTC, Nokia, and Samsung began to follow suit. Soon enough, even Apple lined up to get their phone lens made at the Hunan headquartered lens technology. This was followed by quite a significant rise in profits. With a net worth of $7.4 billion, she was not only the richest woman in China, but was said to be the richest self-made female billionaire in the world. But Zhu is still relentless and tireless in her pursuit to keep pushing the barrier and sustain her success. In 2016, Fortune magazine featured her in their list of most powerful women of Asia Pacific. Zhu Kunfei's story continues to inspire millions of women workers in China and other aspiring entrepreneurs. Jeff Bezos Jeff Bezos founded Amazon.com out of a garage in Seattle in 1995 as an online bookseller. Three years later, he expanded his platform to CDs. More products were added to Amazon from concrete mixers and smoke detectors in 1999 to electric scooters, tennis rackets, and even a wide range of cheese in 2003. Amazon Prime and Mechanical Turk were introduced as new services in 2005, and in 2006, Amazon Web Services was launched, giving businesses the option to rent computing power and database storage. This grew to become the go-to computing platform for loads of Silicon Valley startups. The company's first successful attempt at making and selling a tech gadget was the Kindle Digital Book Reader, which debuted in 2007 and was later upgraded to the Kindle Fire. Tapping into Amazon's steady cash flow, Bezos has also had a series of strategic acquisitions such as Audible, e-commerce store retailer Zappos, grocery chain Whole Foods, Pull Pack, and several others. Despite accomplishing so much already, Bezos shows no signs of taking things slow. Amancio Ortega Zara, a chain of fashion clothing and accessory stores known worldwide, holds a powerful story behind it. Amancio Ortega, being the youngest of his family, started making clothes at a store in a small town in Spain. The wages that his father received as a railway worker was not enough to sustain him and his family, and it was for this reason that he had to leave school. In 1972, Amancio convinced the local women to form cooperatives and founded a company called Confecciones Gal, which sold quilted bathrobes that these cooperatives produced. Three years later, Ortega opened his first apparel retail store, together with his wife Rosalia. He named the store Zara, which became a success, and he later opened a number of Zara stores across Galicia, Spain. Ortega's rise to fortune is truly inspirational to all entrepreneurs. He has shown that hard work and a little business acumen is the sure way to success. Larry Page and Sergey Brin From early computers to high-end scientific calculators, Larry's father's obsession for computing and remarkable advances in the science behind early computers instilled a deep desire in him to succeed, especially in the fields of computer science and technology. He achieved early success with computers by becoming the first student at his high school to complete a science project using an early computer. His family's fascination with computers caused him to believe early in life that he would probably start his own company rather than spend his life working for someone else. 
It was during his studies in the Stanford University that young Larry ran into Sergey Brin, an immigrant science student from the Soviet Union. In the beginning, they never met eye to eye, turning new ideas into arguments, and in general being harsh to one another. However, over time, they became close friends and intellectual equals. Their cooperation on various projects at Stanford resulted in Back Rule, an early search engine that indexed pages around the school's intranet, making them accessible to users. The project was a huge hit at the university, gaining praise and positive remarks about its potential for helping the rest of the world to access information. Google became such a success to the duo that they made several attempts to sell it earlier on, often for prices below what anyone would expect. But instead of any sales, they received immense attention from investors. The site received tremendous funding and later grew into one of the world's most popular and preferable search engines. Carlos Swim Huela Born in Mexico City to Lebanese parents, Carlos Slim is among the world's richest people and is popularly referred to as the Warren Buffett of Mexico. After immigrating to Mexico from Lebanon, Slim's father changed his name and started conducting business in the country. He made money from Mexico's profitable real estate market and it's from this exposure to the world of business that made him the great businessman he is. Carlos and his siblings were taught the essentials of business by their father at an early age. His understanding of the money market was so defined that he didn't spend time playing like most kids. Instead, he bought shares at the age of 12 from a Mexican bank. Despite being well-versed in the world of business, Carlos completed his studies in civil engineering from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. However, his natural entrepreneurial skills couldn't be held back anymore, and Carlos at last started working as a trader. He sharpened his business skills from his first business, after which he opened a brokerage firm for every sector. Later on in 1976, he ventured into some other industries, such as printing, and thereafter decided to launch a parent company of his own, naming it Grupo Gales, then started the Necrobe group of companies. His entrance into the world of telecommunication took place in 1990 when he worked with South Bell Corporation and France Telecom. His great interest in the field made him receive the very prestigious government telecommunications company Telemex from the Mexican government. He expanded by buying stakes in multiple telecommunications companies like Tectel, ATL, etc. Sadly, at this point in his life, he went through a major heart surgery and even though most people thought his assets would be sold or liquidated, he bounced back and took back control of his company. Well, there you have it guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. With that said, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.